This is Land of Havilah, Luke 20b. Coming up, for the only time in the book of Luke, there's a mention of a Jewish sect called the Sadducees. They denied that man had a spirit or that there were angels, a resurrection, or an afterlife, Acts 23.8. John the Baptist called them vipers, along with the Pharisees, Matthew 3.7. Verse 27. Some of the Sadducees came to him, those who deny that there is a resurrection. They asked him, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies having a wife and he is childless, his brother should take the wife and raise up children for his brother. There were therefore seven brothers. The first took a wife and died childless. The second took her as wife and he died childless. The third took her, and likewise the seven all left no children and died. Afterward the woman also died. Therefore in the resurrection whose wife of them will she be? For the seven had her as wife. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy to to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. For they can't die any more, for they are like the angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all are alive to him. Some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you speak well. They didn't dare to ask him any more questions. Comment. Jesus taught and acknowledged all the controversial things that the Sadducees didn't believe. Angels, Luke 9, 26. The resurrection, Luke 14, 14. Spirits, Luke 4, 36. He'd say on the cross, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, Luke 23, 46. He said a person must be born of water and spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven, John 3, 5. He said God is spirit, John 4, 24. When he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, the text says her spirit returned, Luke 8, 55. The Sadducees wanted to know how can there be a resurrection because a resurrection would mean a woman with multiple husbands would wind up with all of them in the afterlife. Jesus said in the resurrection will be in Greek, huios of the resurrection, which means children or sons of the resurrection. Our location will change, of course, but so will our nature, quote, the dead will be raised incorruptible and we will be changed for this perishable body must become imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 53. Part of that change is that there'll be no male or female. Even now in this time, quote, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus, end quote. This is already the beginning of the acknowledgement of our ultimate state in heaven that already in this time heaven recognizes no essential difference in male or female, and in the resurrection our incorruptible bodies will be neither male or female. In the resurrection, instead of just husband and wife being one, Matthew 19, 5, we'll all be one with Christ, quote, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, end quote. Jesus pointed out what God said to Moses at the burning bush, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God didn't say I was their God, but I am their God, meaning Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still alive. In English, the presence or absence of a resurrection hinged on the subtle difference between the present and past tense of a verb. It was a difference of two or three letters. That's why every word and letter of the scripture is important. Jesus said, quote, until heaven and earth pass away, not even one smallest letter or one tiny pen stroke shall in any way pass away from the law until all things are accomplished, Matthew 5:18. The scripture is accurate to the letter and to the tenses of the verbs, though we acknowledge there's been some very minor loss of integrity through copying errors over the years. Coming up, Jesus reverses the table. He has a question for his questioners. Verse 41. He said to them, Why do they say that the Christ is David's son? David himself says in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. 
David therefore calls him Lord, so how is he his son? Comment. Why would David call his descendant Lord? Twenty-seven generations down the line from David, Matthew 1, 16 and 17, there was Joseph who became the husband of Mary who bore Jesus. Joseph wasn't the biological father, but Jesus subjected himself to Joseph, Luke 2, 51, which indicated that Joseph adopted Jesus. So, since Joseph descended from David and Joseph adopted Jesus, Jesus was in the line of David. He was the son or descendant of David. But Jesus was also the Son of God, so therefore David called him Lord. The scripture that Jesus quoted, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, is from Psalm 110, verse 1. When Jesus ascended, quote, he was raised up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, Mark 16, 19. From there, quote, he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, 1 Corinthians 15, 25. Verse 45. In the hearing of all the people, he said to his disciples, Beware of those scribes who like to walk in long robes and love greetings in the marketplaces, the best seats in the synagogues, and the best places at feasts who devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers, these will receive greater condemnation. Comment, there are predatory ministers out there. They're in it for social standing and money. Luke 21 is next at landofhavila.net. Luke 21.